<laughs> okay. So buyer agency, there's no question about a buyer's agency contract. Okay. Absolutely must. There's no question, including rentals. If you work with a buyer or you work with a tenant, you must have an exclusive buyer agency agreement. Think of it like you can't take a listing without a listing contract. Mm -hmm. You can't work with a buyer without a buyer's contract. Where does it get interesting? Now, obviously, everybody heard about it. I mean, it's out in the news. It's been, they've been talking about it for a while. Now, the buyers are going to still try to say that they don't want to sign it because obviously they're responsible for you as their agent to pay you for your services. They are talking about you can do hourly rates. You can do percentages, you can do flat fees, okay? I feel, my personal feeling is, let's keep it simple. And the key is let's do the same thing with all of the buyers that we work with. Mm -hmm. I mean, same thing, what I mean is try not to say, okay, I'm going to charge you hourly rate, you no. I'm going to charge percentage, you I'm going to charge flat fee, you I'm going to charge you for retainer fee or whatever. Because if if I know real estate law, sooner enough, what's going to happen is a new discrimination idea oh. is going to come to fruition. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. well, why do you treat different people different way? So mm -hmm. I will give you a scenario as the broker. If I would work with a buyer, I want to charge them a retainer fee, but I'm going to charge a retainer fee from every buyer that I personally work with. So what do you mean by retainer fee? Okay, retainer fee, like an attorney charges a retainer fee. Okay. Okay, so let's say, I would say, I'm going to charge you a $1,000 retainer fee. That $1,000 is going to be taken into account when it's the commission time, when it's closing time. So whatever the fee is, that's going to be minus the retainer fee. It's going to be non-refundable, but it's going to be credited to their total commission owed. So now let's talk about you guys mm -hmm. you get a buyer now what's gonna happen is they're going to interview obviously other agents it's like doing a listing appointment really it's the same thing when you sit down with the seller you tell the seller what you're gonna do for them explain to them about the process you tell them what is your fiduciary duty to them now you are also having a buyer apply the same rules to the buyer they have to sign a listing agreement with you that says how much the total commission is all of these things the same thing now in the paperwork that i gave you the reason i gave you that buyer package is because everything that's included in that package has to be signed. Now the question arises: okay, well, I met a buyer the first time. They don't trust me to sign an agreement. We still didn't build trust. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. what we want to do is we want to give them an opportunity. We want to date each other. So you can sign an agreement for one day. You can sign an agreement for one week. So mm -hmm. you're going to say, I don't want you to sign a six months agreement with me. I don't want to commit to you for six months because first of all, we don't know if we can work together, but national law is obligating you and me, you, when I say you, I mean the buyer, it's obligating you to be represented. It's obligating me to represent you. And the only, the obligation is that we need to sign a buyer's contract agreement. Otherwise I cannot take you to go see a house and no one else can. The only thing that you as a buyer can do is wait for an open house and walk into an open house. But then if you decide to make an offer, that agent is going to tell you the same thing. I can't represent you unless you sign a buyer's agency agreement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I want to do, I want to make sure that you fill out the agreement as little as possible, because the more little things you put in there, it creates a lot more, let's leave it to interpretation. And it could be interpreted differently in court or in arbitration or whatever. The last thing you want to do is close the deal and never get paid or have to go to years of court and arbitration to even find out if you're going to get paid. I don't want you to do anything non-exclusive where they can go and look at the same house with other agents. No, that's why there are certain things that I filled up for you mm -hmm. as a sample. Mm -hmm. And the rest is you have to put your name. You have to put the commission fee that you're going to charge.
No, New yeah, York is New York, New Jersey is New Jersey. So what okay. we're looking at is that New York? I send you New York, yes. You need to be able to speak to your buyers and explain to them why they have to sign it. First of all, if they buy something before the 8th, there's just the 2nd. If they buy something on the 4th and then you get into contract before the 8th, I don't think the rules apply yet. But everybody is suggesting to start doing it immediately and not wait for the last minute, which is the 17th. Yeah. So they are, the new rule starts on the 17th, right? Yeah, it starts... Yes, officially. No, no it's, the deadline is 17th. So if you don't do no. it, you, you cannot pass that date, but it, a lot of people already started. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, how are you planning to get them to sign it? We're planning to get on Zoom call with you and them tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you ask me for the <laughs> when, you, <laughs> when you said to me that, oh, you need those papers because they have to sign it tomorrow, I thought you had a plan. No, yes, that's the plan. <laughs> ah, that's, the plan. <laughs> that's the plan. Hold on. Okay, but no, seriously, guys. you. We're you, serious. We need you tomorrow. <laughs> I understand that you need me and I'm okay with that. I will, I will help you out. The concern I have is that I don't want you to expect to just have them sign the agreement just because it's the law. You need to be able to sell your services. Now, I started to work on a buyer's representation type of ebook type of a thing, but it's taking me much longer than I anticipated. But again, if I provide you with my representation and it's going to specifically say what I'm going to do for them, mm -hmm. and then if mm -hmm. you use mine exactly the way it is and then you don't perform, now you're opening up yourself to a liability and a lawsuit because now they're your client. They're not your customer anymore. Just like you have responsibility and liability to your seller client, Okay. Well, we don't perform. What do we don't we what we don't do? I mean, we always do. So I don't know why. I okay, mean... it's going to have to be specifically stated, right? Because obviously they might interview other people, just mm -hmm. like sellers mm -hmm. interview other people. I may have something unique that I do that maybe somebody else doesn't. Right. We'll we'll take that out. We'll take a look at that and. Um, I'm just letting you know, don't just take mine when mm -hmm. I give it to you just take and people. just leave it like that because yeah, yeah. then if you don't perform. Yeah, no, no, we'll, we'll take a look, we'll read through it and, uh, you know, if there is something extra that we know. We will, we will think about it, yeah. Yeah, we'll just okay. take it out or it, mm -hmm. just send this and add editable like so we can add it you know? well uh i'm i'm doing it on canva so you're gonna have to do canva in order for you to edit it okay, okay. Well, now yeah. let's talk about commissions obviously buyers are not gonna be happy about the fact that they're paying commissions mm -hmm. so my question to you is this how do you overcome that before you show a property, you're going to have to make a phone call. And I recommend to follow that phone call with a written note. Mm -hmm. Because he said, she said, does not stand on a contract. Yeah. Okay. So now before you show any house, you have to pick up the phone and call and say, is seller offering any buyer's broker compensation? And what is it? Okay. So let's say my commission contract with the buyer says percent. You're saying now that you still can get that 1% from the seller. You can get 1% from the seller and the balance from the buyer because you agreed with the buyer. You have a contract with the buyer that your commission is X amount of percent. That's not the problem. If the seller pays everything, we don't have a problem. The problem becomes when you have a buyer's agreement with the buyer that technically is supposed to pay you a commission, and now the seller is not offering commission or not offering as the amount of the commission that you agreed upon with your buyer. My, my problem is, let's say, house is 500000 right? 10000 So now I'm a buyer, right? 
I want to buy a house. I have 10% down. I barely have any money to buy. I have to come up with cash for closing. And now I have to come up for $10,000. You as a buyer is now have to pay commission to any agent. No, I can just go to a listing agent and say, Oh, no, you can. Buy, and they're going to re re negotiate it. That's, they, they will. Okay. So let me tell you, you are, but you're not represented. Yeah, for ten thousand dollars, I'm okay with not be, being represented. Honestly, like I, I okay, mean, I'm just so. saying the realistic situation for a lot of people who don't have money. If you go to a listing agent, first of all, listing agents are not going to want to do that anymore because they don't. They're not allowed to get paid for a buyer's representation on their listing. So they don't want to do double work for the same amount of money. Wait, wait, wait. If they do put your offer in, that's all they do for you. They're not going to represent you. You're on your own for negotiating inspections. You're on your own to do all of these things. So if you don't have the $10,000 to pay out of pocket, that's a different conversation than you saying that I'm just not going to do it because somebody else will do it for free. Nobody's going to do it for free. That's the problem right now. We can t say that right now, but because there is no cause like that before, and they're going to say, well, my friend didn't do it, so I'm not going to do it. And they go to someone else. So, okay. They're going to have the same answer from I someone understand. else. But meanwhile, we lost the client. What do you suggest as a solution? Nothing. I'm just, we're going to try to do, to do this, but, you know... But wow. Nadia, you can't say you have a problem without creating a solution. So if you believe that that's a problem, what the solution is, do you think? So do you think if you're the buyer who doesn't want to sign the agreement or pay the commission, you're not going to pay commission if the, the seller is paying commission. But if the seller is not paying enough commission, you're going to have to pay just the portion that's not enough. Well, or if yeah. you're going to come to a point where you still want to make the deal it's up to you to renegotiate the commission with the buyer just like you renegotiate commission with the seller sometimes in mm -hmm. order to make a deal but the thing is by the contract the buyer is obligated for the commission not the seller the sellers are not obligated no more to pay commission and the sellers have the same information that we do and the buyers do that they no oh. longer have to pay Buyer's commission, so it's their choice whether they want to oh. or they don't want. Yeah. Now, if a listing agent is a good listing agent, they will advise their seller to no. offer buyer compensation. Mm -hmm. But no. if the listing agent is not a super good agent, they will have a hard time convincing their seller if the seller doesn't see it that way. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm just saying there's going to be a problem. Uh... There's always going to be a problem for the for the first few months while the industry yeah, is gets adjusting because yeah. buyers are going to say, oh, maybe somebody is going to do it differently. Mm -hmm. But they're not because nobody is going to sign a buyer's brokerage agreement saying that the buyer owes me zero. You cannot discriminate showing a house to a buyer that pays or don't pay. Mm -hmm. then, it's, then it's a violation of steering. Yeah. Well, we're just not going to show the ones that don't sign the agreement. We're not going to show. I mean, we're not going to run around with people. Oh, but that's why I'm telling you, no, no buyer's agent is going to sign a buyer's agreement with zero compensation. You can say to your buyer, well, my compensation is going to be percent, for example. Mm -hmm. When we make an offer, I will include that fee into the okay. offer. Right. And okay. try to get the seller to pay for it. But in the end of the day, who pays for the house? No, the buyer. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, I'm going to give you a scenario the way I'm thinking. If you're going to be with multiple offers, mm -hmm. it's going to create a challenge because let's say if all the offers are the same dollar wise and all the terms um, are the same term wise, all the down payments are the same term wise mm -hmm. right however one offer says the buyer's broker's commission is included in this number which offer is higher really the one that's not included exactly so that's where i see the problems 
The problems that you're talking about, it's normal. Everybody's going to have to deal with that in the beginning because it's adjusting for buyers that are used to not paying for anything, getting free service. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, going to have to commit to paying for the service. That's going to be an adjusting for everybody, not just you, not just me, but everybody in the industry, except places that are not agreeing with this and they are not adapting that. Like Brooklyn, for example, they said, Fuck it, we're not doing it. But Brooklyn MLS, their board is a co-op board. Mm -hmm. So brokers that belong to the board, they are shareholders. It's not the same boards like in New Jersey, like on Staten Island. There's another state, I don't remember it's Mark, yeah. one. <laughs> they said, we're not adapting to that law. And I agree with them because that creates more lawsuits because the idiots who make those laws have no idea what the hell they're doing because mm -hmm. they're not attorneys. Mm -hmm. Legislators back in the day used to be 80% of all the legislators used to be attorneys in the past. Mm -hmm. Now only 20% of them are. So when they make laws, they don't understand left from right. They think that they're helping, they're creating transparency, but actually they're not. Because before everybody knew who's getting what. Now mm -hmm. nobody knows anything. They say yeah. that the brokers allowed to post if there's compensation on their own personal website but it cannot be posted anywhere else so whether i agree disagree whether i think it's smart or stupid it doesn't change the fact that now everybody has to follow this mm -hmm. so we can argue all we want and have debates about why it's a good idea or a bad idea but in the end of the day we have to comply oh yeah so you can tell your buyer listen yeah. I'm going to do the best that I can to negotiate my fee from the seller to pay it. Mm -hmm. But if you really love the house and the seller is going to refuse and that's going to interfere with you buying the house, then you would want to pay my fee. Or if there are multiple offers, right? And others are, for example, either higher. Or exactly. Yeah. So the way nobody talks about this part, that's how I look at it. I'm saying to myself, this is where competition is going to happen if at some point see the the rule is a good rule but not for this market the rule this rule is a very good rule for a buyer's market yeah. right now it's not a good rule but with every change there's always resistance and getting used to and we're going to have to get used to it mm -hmm. so i've never done a buyer's consultation like that before and i'm very confident that i'll do it very well tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> because I will explain it the way I explain it to you. Yeah, just like simple. Things. And really, in the end of the day, the question is, would you work for free? And they're going to say, no, you go to work, you expect to get paid. Well, we go to work for you, we need to get paid. The only difference is we work and work and work and work. I understand your point. I'm going to answer your point in a minute. But first, I'm going to make a point because that's okay. very important. It doesn't matter. The contract has to have a signature. I don't, yeah, Mash, I don't think we can mention that. We can say that we will try to negotiate for every house. What if they're going to love the house? And then like, like Ira said, then they don't care, you know, if they pay extra 10 or $15,000 because okay. they will have to pay it all anyway if they want to beat the price, right? Here's the thing. You can say to them if they're very resistant and, and if they bring up the fact, well, we want to know before. Yes, they need to know before you show okay. them the house yes. what the compensation is. Is. Duh. We don't even know if they're going to resist or not, honestly, tomorrow. Exactly. But I'm saying Duh. just for the sake of the conversation, mm -hmm. because yeah. we should expect resistance. We should expect it. Mm -hmm. Duh. So if we, if we address the conversation with the expectation that there would be resistance, then the conversation goes one way and then we might not get resistant. But if we approach the conversation as if there's no resistance and then resistance comes, the resistance becomes an objection. And then you stop yeah. feeling an objection that you're not prepared for. Now, if the situation is when they say, well, I don't have money out of pocket to pay you, that's not a problem. We can add that into the offer. Like oh. we used to add seller's concessions. Oh. 
we can add that into the offer. So it becomes like a part of mortgage? Yeah. There's talk about that the mortgage industry is working on making that portion of the broker's commission not part of the appraisal. Oh, okay. So we're working on it. I didn't hear that it's final, but I've heard even a, like already several months ago that they're working on it to put that separate from the appraisal mm -hmm. amount. Yeah, because it's not fair. It's not, yeah, it's not part of the... Yeah. So this is like in the works. So tomorrow, I don't know what to expect from these people either. Plus, they don't know me. That's going to no, be the can, first time. Yeah, we can say that you're a broker and I guess we can somehow start talking, telling that there are new rules, right? And we would like to explain it to them before we're showing more houses. Well, okay, let's, let's finish. Let's talk yeah, about yeah. that. So please remember... You are not allowed to take them out until that agreement is signed. Okay, so that's a, uh, another point. Yeah, we can't even, we can tell them tomorrow that we can't even continue to take them out because we, they, all these papers needs to be signed. These new regulations and they're very strict, that's it. Exactly. That's important. Now, again, let's talk about a brand new client that that's your first time you talking to them and the first time you meeting with them. So after you discuss what their needs and all of that stuff, what they need and what they want and all these things, the next conversation is about buyer agency and explaining to them what you are gonna do, what's your role, how you are gonna be working with them, what are you gonna do for them? What can they expect from you? All the points that you are involved from the beginning of making searches, making phone calls, taking them, making appointments from the time they decide to make an offer, guiding them, all of these steps that you do all the way to the closing. And after you do all that, then you start talking about the buyer agency agreement and the law and the rules and how it works. Now, if I'm the type of a person, I would put it out there myself and say, look, we don't know each other. We don't know if I'm the right agent for you. I don't know if you're the right client for me. So mm -hmm. let's do a short term agreement. Try to do it for 30 days. If they are resistant, they say, okay, how about this? Let's do it for two weeks. If they resist, work, no problem. How about this? You want to see how many houses Sunday? Four? Let's do it for these four houses. And you got to explain to them that when I show you these houses, if you decide to make an offer on them after our, if you're not, if we're not working together anymore, but you're still going to owe me commission. Otherwise, you're going to be owing two commissions. You got to tell them the truth. Mm hmm and in a way, they're going to think twice. Now, another key point, when you are getting a new client, the first conversation is, did you sign any agreements with any other agents? Oh, yeah, that's important. So no. do you have any questions so far? No, but if you have any YouTube videos or any links about this, I would love to hear, you know, sometimes like education. I honestly didn't make my, make one my own because I feel I've seen so many videos out there and I just don't want to talk about the same thing. I did something about how I feel about when it comes to like buying a foreclosure and that, that now you have to pay for this, you know, you have to pay for branch for taxes and you have to pay for this and for that and for that. I mean, you can find a bunch of stuff on YouTube just by typing uh, NAR settlement, a buyer's broker commission. Okay. To me, that topic is very boring and it, it does not align with the niche that I'm focusing on. So it's, it's like, I just didn't want to do it. Awesome. You know? But sometimes it's nice to hear, even if it's not exactly what you're going to use or I'm going to use, but it's nice to hear, you know, and then you're like, okay, I can say that. Yeah, there's a flood of videos about that. You just have to be careful who you listen to because mm -hmm. not just because you hear it online doesn't mean that it's really the fact. So if you want to listen, NAR has a lot of videos about it. So if I were you, I would just look at that. I mean, okay. Cyber always sends stuff with that. So if you want to listen to videos, I would listen from NAR. Mm -hmm. Cyber had a few sessions about it. Uh, I remember I sent you guys an email. But let's keep it simple. What time can you do so I can tell them? Do they know yet or they don't know yet? No, I, I told them we need to get on Zoom call tomorrow. I didn't say exactly uh, what it is about. 